Hey guys, I thought I would take this beautiful sunny afternoon to talk to you about SBF, my favourites in 2023. We're in 2023 now. The last time I did one of these videos, I think was 2021. I have a few newbies to mention, so I will link last year's video down below if you want to check it out, but I will recap all of my favourites and they're all vegan and cruelty free and I keep them in this little Space NK case, which is massively overpriced and not worth the money because the zip sucks, but it is very aesthetic. If you want to subscribe, stick around for some vegan and cruelty free things then feel free to but i'm gonna jump straight on in with my absolute favorite i'm gonna go from most favorite to least favorite but i would say the first three or four are all amazing i personally have normal skin in terms of oiliness but i do have sensitive skin so a lot of sunscreens in the western world are just not to my taste so i tend to gravitate towards korean brands and i would say my absolute favorite is the beauty of Joseon spf 50 this is spf 50 plus pa plus 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 and this is beautiful it is so lightweight and gentle but nourishing to the skin it is so lovely and i've actually had this tube a long time so it's amazing underneath makeup and it's also got probiotics in i think it's got fermented rice in it as well it's got some really lovely ingredients that are very soothing to the skin i highly highly recommend my second favorite i'd say very closely followed is this one and i'm not sure why i like this one any less than this one they are both beautiful i would repurchase both of them i think they're both incredible in fact they're probably tied top place this one's really good i think it's out of stock at the moment you can buy korean skincare at places like style vanna skin insider it's mainly online But yeah, you can get them online and I highly recommend getting some or at least getting a sample because they are just so gentle and game changing for sensitive skin, sensitive eyes. This one here is the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella. Oh, it's a long name. Hyalu Psyca Water Fit Sun Serum, SPF 50, PA++++. So it's the same SPF level as this one. This one's really, really gentle as well. Really lightweight, a thin consistency. It's, it's beautiful, really. And I also really like about this one is it's actually a pump. So it's a squeezy tube, but it's you only get out the amount you want. You can really control how much it is you're getting out. And it's just so lightweight, thin. The, none of these ones I'm going to mention in my top four are have any white cast. They are just beautiful, lightweight. And I feel like for people with sensitive skin, sometimes we hear chemical sunscreens and we, we hear the word chemical and we think, oh, that's going to be really harsh on the skin. But genuinely, the actives in these are so nice, so lightweight, not like some that are really strong and really sting your eyes. They're very, very gentle and um, I highly recommend these two. And then very, very closely followed is the Purito Broad Spectrum SPF 50 plus PA++++, same SPF level as the ones I've just mentioned. And it's again, really, really thin, really weightless, lightweight, um, that's the same thing, just a different way around. <laughs> Weightless and lightweight. Makeup applies amazingly on top. All of these I basically use as primers because they just prime the skin really nicely. Obviously they protect from the sun as well. And if you hadn't heard, Purito actually had to reformulate. This was their old version, the Centella Green Level Unscented Sun. This is the old bottle because this one actually was found to only have SPF 19 instead of 50 but they have reformulated it they've had it independently sort of checked I'm pretty sure they were very open about it and this one genuinely is SPF 50 according to the kind of tests and things because that was a little bit of a scandal um because this was a lovely formula very very similar formula to this one I feel like they're very similar into kind of the weight of them but obviously this one was only SPF 19 and people didn't realize that so that's, that's not great for the brand image but I do recommend their newly re newly reformulated one it's really really gentle and lovely you might recognize this bad boy because i mentioned this one in last year's favorites and it is still a top fave i would say this is a really great one for sensitive skin still but it is slightly heavier than the korean sunscreens i've mentioned this one is by sos serum who are a uk based brand and this is honestly really really good if you've got dry skin if you've got normal skin the only thing is if you've got it's not a greasy formula at all, but if you've got oily skin, I know people who have oily skin don't really like heaviness on their skin, and this is slightly thicker. It's kind of got the consistency of E45 cream, if you've ever felt that, so it's very gentle. It's really good for sensitive skin, and I love it, and I really recommend it, and I will always repurchase it. Slightly chunkier in the packaging, which I don't love. Also, it is slightly thicker, and it's not heavy, it's not greasy, it's not uncomfortable at all. It sits amazingly underneath makeup. I love this to bits, but if you prefer something really lightweight, like a lotion as opposed to a cream, then I would recommend the Korean top three that I just mentioned, but this one I will continue to repurchase and use because it's so gentle, and actually, I quite like, especially in winter, a little bit of a thicker formula. Sometimes it's quite nice to have kind of like that extra hydrate, not hydration, but just like moisturizingness, you know? 
scientific words moisturizing this okay and then one that i recommend but maybe not quite as much as the the first four i just mentioned this is the claire's all day airy sunscreen spf 50 pa plus 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 claire's are another korean brand i love claire's they are a really lovely brand they are cruelty free they've got loads of vegan options and i think i remember that even their non-vegan options, they were starting to reformulate to be vegan so that it can be a completely vegan line. I don't know if that's happened yet, but I remember reading about that a few months ago. I do really like this and I will use it. You can tell I haven't kind of reached for it quite as much as the other ones. My issue sometimes with sunscreens is when I get them, I like to kind of work them right underneath the eye. And sometimes when I get them right underneath here, they can sometimes sting my eyes a little bit. And sometimes this one stung my eyes a bit. For that reason, I probably wouldn't repurchase it over the other ones because it's a similar kind of like price point and similar sort of brand and similar consistency it's just the kind of sensitivity to the eyes that i find but it's not an awful option it's really nice and if you don't have sensitive eyes you might really like this it has a slightly less dewy finish because the first four i mentioned all have kind of like a similar kind of healthy glow finish this one is slightly less dewy but it's still nice and kind of makes your skin look healthy if that makes any sense because it's it is moisturizing it's just yeah it's just that little bit of kind of irritation underneath the eyes i mean irritation is a step too far it's not irritation it's just like a little bit uncomfortable so all of the sunscreens i've mentioned so far have been chemical sunscreens but i well actually the sos one has mineral sunscreen in it as well but it's chemical as well these two are i believe just mineral sunscreens so there are different kinds of sunscreens there's chemical actives and mineral actives they just work slightly differently and people have different preferences i used to love mineral sunscreens exclusively because of my sensitive skin but now i found that there are chemical sunscreens that aren't irritating to my skin i quite like chemical a little bit more but i still love these two so this one here i've mentioned time and time again this is the cooler daydream mineral primer it's spf 30 and and it is a silicone based primer so it's blurring you know if you've tried a uh, silicone based primer before you know what i mean it's kind of like very soft blurring i tend to use this as well as another sunscreen i don't really use it on its own because i don't really put silicone primer all over my face um it has a tiny bit of a white cast which is something you find with mineral primers um, it's just the nature of the actives like white cast is kind of like a white tint to the skin obviously it doesn't matter too much for me because i am fair but people who have brown skin and deep skin um it will show up a little bit more but you can see like it doesn't have a massive white tint it's just ever so slightly but i find it kind of after a while it, it doesn't it doesn't stay you know it doesn't look super chalky once you've got makeup on top of it or if you don't want to wear makeup you know once it's kind of sat on the skin a little bit so i do really recommend this one if you're looking for one that's kind of makeup mix with sunscreen i love this one a lot but i tend to use it as well as a cream sunscreen just because double the, it's not actually double the protection but and then the other one i quite like i really like this one for running if i want to kind of wear an spf uh, in, and go for a run in the sunshine not that I run that often because I find running really boring but sometimes I just fancy it you know and this one's really good for that this one's got a little bit of a tint to it um, and I don't actually know how it would work on deeper skin tone because the tint is kind of like a fair tint if that makes sense so and I'm pretty sure they only do one shade but correct me if I'm wrong this is the Naked Sundays SPF 50 plus um, it's 100% mineral and it's their collagen glow sunscreen so I will show you the tint now you'll be able to see it's kind of like a nude sort of tint and it's only I mean I don't even know if it's intentionally tinted or if that's just how it is but you'll be able to see I've got a bit of gradual tan on my hand so you can see it is slightly tinted super glowy super duper glowy you can kind of see really really glowy so just quite nice if you want to be out in the out in the sun and you want like a little bit of protection a tiny bit of tint and also the glow is real with this one and i have actually also tried their other spf and their spray spf the spray spf is a good concept but i just again i have really sensitive eyes and i just found it really stung my eyes but i also found that with the bondi bondi sand spray it's it's a shame because that'd be a really good way to kind of top up your sunscreen during the day once you know obviously you need to reapply after a while if you've been out in the sun but yeah it just wasn't for me because my eyes are sensitive and it's really really annoying it's really annoying i'm sure there's people out there that it works for but for me it really really stings my eyes that said if i do need to top up my spf for any reason i love this product this is by make prem and it is their airy light physical sun stick formulated with zinc spf 50 pa plus 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 and it is basically a, a sun stick it is what it says and it looks a little bit grubby sorry if you can see my makeup on it but i use this to reapply when i've been out in the sun for a long time and i need to like reapply on top of my makeup if you're wearing powder products it does move your makeup slightly but i feel like there's no perfect way to reapply 
sunscreen really my but my favorite ways like i say i don't like using a spray because it stings my eyes i do like using a stick especially when you have minimal base products it works nicely it's really convenient it's not messy it's all in one product and then the other way i quite like to do it is if i have like my spf with me and i'll just bring a sponge with me and you can kind of pat over the top and it gives you a bit more coverage so if i'm wearing heavy makeup i would use that option if I'm wearing minimal makeup I will use this option and they both work really well I think I really recommend this I think it's good you can get it on style vanna and the brand is cruelty free and this is obviously vegan as well so I would just mention these two because I've tried them but I don't actually recommend either of these if you've got sensitive eyes or sensitive skin firstly I'm sad about this one because it is just so sexy look at it look at this it's a refillable package. I love Fenty. I love Fenty skin. Actually, that's a lie. I don't love Fenty skin. I've not tried. <laughs> this is the only thing I've tried from Fenty skin. But I love Fenty as a brand, you know. Um, they have got some great products. And my favourite lip gloss ever is the Gloss Bomb. So I'm not sl I'm not slating the brand. This is just not for me. And I'm pretty sure I have a full review of this. So I'll link it if it's live. But it's it basically the long and short of it is it's a nice... Uh, this is, sorry, this is the full name of this. I think is like their Hydrovisor SPF 30. Um, and it's a nice finish. I liked how it felt on the skin. It was nice and lightweight, but it stung my eyes. And at first it didn't, but then after a little while, it really, really started to sting my eyes. And it's just not for me because of that reason. So I personally wouldn't recommend this one. And also this, this is really sad because Garnier went cruelty free and they do have like quite a few skincare products. Their SPF is just not great. This is SPF 50, super UV, like very high protection. It's supposed to help with like dark spots and stuff which I, do, I actually don't personally have so I can't really vouch for that. I thought it was going to be a goodie because it's very lightweight, it's very thin, you can hear it. It's really watery and lightweight but oh my gosh it stung my eyes so badly. So this one is not for me either and like bear in mind I'm not getting it in my eyes, I just kind of tap underneath here um, and then it's kind of, it's almost like the fumes from the actives. So that's a real shame because this is a drugstore option, but it's just, just not for me. Just not. If anyone's tried any of these ones that I don't like, and you also have sensitive skin and sensitive eyes, let me know. Also, I have a video reviewing Hello Sunday, which is a slightly newer sunscreen brand. And I have to say, I really went off. I tried their drops. I will link my video down below, but their drops really started to sting my eyes. And like my first few like impressions of it was that they didn't sting my eyes. But after a while, I realized that they, they do they do sting my eyes and I would not repurchase them um, but I will leave that review video down below if you want to see how that how it applies and um, they also do hand cream this one here is SPF 30 to be honest I don't really know why I bought this I mean I bought it to test the brand um, it's a nice hand cream but I kind of after a while I realized you can just use sunscreen on the back of your hands like why do I need a dedicated hand cream for with SPF in, I just kind of suddenly realised, have I been have I been duped into buying something that I really don't need? And I think I have, by no fault other than my own. But yeah, I personally would not repurchase this because I think it's overpriced for a little tube of, of sunscreen, but it's quite handy to have in your bag. And then last but not least, I don't like this one, to be honest, but I thought I would just mention it because it's the last one in my collection. And this is the Flawless Advanced Skincare SPF 50, my BFF. I don't like it, it leaves a white cast on me and it just feels a little bit heavy it's just not for me but i don't know if anybody's heard of this brand so i probably won't linger on this one too long i think it's a, a new brand maybe and they very kindly sent it to me but i don't really think it's worth the money because i think it's quite an expensive brand so that is my little spf roundup i hope that was useful i haven't mentioned any body spf products because i would be here until midnight and the sun is setting and i don't think i have time to do that but just to round up my absolute favorites are these four i will leave all details down below i'm so happy i found spf products that i absolutely adore because like i say i spent so long trying them and using products that would make my eyes water and just kind of like bearing with it and so it's really really satisfying to land on products that you genuinely adore and really really recommend so yeah thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed if you got anything from this please give this video a thumbs up share it if you want to follow me on my socials if you would like to and hopefully i will see you very soon bye